Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at the Xcode service that's built into OS X Server. Now, Xcode is Apple's uh, development kit uh, that you would use to create applications for uh, the Mac or, or iOS. You'd go through and, and develop your application using Xcode. And so OS X Server has an Xcode server built in that allows you to share uh, in the development of that between other uh, people on your team and be able to integrate that uh, together so that you can actually see the changes. Uh, you can have bots kind of combing through your code to make sure everything's okay and it really just sets up kind of a nice uh, potential developer environment. Now as we get started I want to let you know that I am not a developer so I'm not going to be showing you how to develop uh, applications using Xcode or Xcode Server. I'm simply showing you the service and the basics of how to set it up and then from there uh, you'd have to learn Xcode and all of that on your own. So I just want to let you know what this screencast is about. So this is the uh, Xcode service here. Now in order to use all of the features uh, of the Xcode server you really need to have a developer account. And so if you go over to Apple's website at uh, developer.apple.com, uh, here you have uh, some information on uh, the, the, the development program. Now, membership in the developer program costs $99 a year. Now, it used to be that it was $99 uh, for iOS, another $99 for OS X. Uh, but now uh, $99 gets you all of the betas and access to all of the code. So you get access to OS 10, iOS, and to the watch uh, application as well. So it really is a, a good deal. Uh, they've cut the price down, and it really makes it uh, kind of a nice value. And you can see here you've got access to all of that. Now, in order to do that, you would have to come in and actually join uh, and sign up for the developer program. I've already done that, uh, so I'm not going to uh, walk you through that, but just want to let you know that that was there. Let me just put this down. Now once you've got uh, your developer uh, license all set up and ready to go and you're a member of the program, uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure you've downloaded Xcode. And so you want to come into the App Store here and get Xcode. Uh, Xcode is free, so there's no charge for it, but you do need to download and have it installed in order for us to set up the uh, Xcode server. Uh, it does take a little while to install Xcode, so you know give yourself a little bit of time there, but once it's installed and ready to go, you'll be all set. So let me just uh, put this down here. All right, so here we are again in the Xcode service. Very simple. We need to choose uh, Xcode that we're going to use. Again, it says here you need to download it uh, the, from the Mac App Store. So we're going to choose it. And it's basically just going to take us into our documents area here. And we'll scroll all the way down and select our Xcode instance and say choose. And so now it's preparing to configure uh, the Xcode server. So it's going to go through a process of uh, preparing it. Again, it's going to launch Xcode here. You agree with the uh, licensing agreement and then you need to authenticate. And we'll say OK. And so now it says these applications have to be quit, including iTunes. So we're just going to say quit all. Because I had iTunes open, so we're going to quit the iTunes application and allow Xcode to start installing the components that are needed uh, in order for it to uh, work with the Xcode server. And so it's going to go ahead and install that. And uh, again, your mileage may vary on how long that takes. You can see here it's really speeding up. I'm going to let it finish the uh, installation here. And once we do that, then we'll have some options that we'll be able to choose uh, for setting up our own Xcode server. And so we just need all the components installed. So I'm going to let it uh, finish up here and do its thing. Again, I don't know how long that's going to take there for the last part. And when it's done, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, here we are back on uh, Xcode. Now that Xcode has been added and everything's been set up, and you can see now we we get a screen where we can set our settings up. Uh, like most of our other uh, applications, you've got a status area, again, showing that the service is off, so we can't access it. Uh, we've got permissions, just like uh, usual, uh, although here logged in users can create bots, uh, or anyone can view bots. Now, bots are basically... Um, are, is basically just software that runs through your code uh, to make sure that your code is working properly. And this is, comes in handy when you've got multiple developers that are working on a project at one time. Uh, that way you can kind of see where the errors in code are and, and all of that. Now I can edit this if I want to and just specify. I can say that bots can be created or viewed by either all users, logged in users, or only some users. And if I select only some, then I can just specify specifics. And so here we'll just use logged in users for right now. Uh, then you can say also uh, allow view only access for, and you can choose again all users in that case. 
uh, because again, logged in users would include some users. That's why that's not showing up. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that alone and then allow uh, connections from, just like we have on all the other services, all networks, private networks, or only some. So I'm just going to leave that in the default, but I just wanted to show you again that you can set your permissions for uh, the application and for the service within OS X Server. Now you can see here on the builds, uh, we're going to perform builds using, and this is our current uh, version of Xcode. If we wanted to, we could come in here and just choose another version if we had that. Again, I only have one, but if we had another one, we could choose it. Uh, I'm just going to cancel that. Now we can also add a uh, developer team uh, if we want to. And so this, this allows you to set up a team uh, of people that will be working on your code. Like I said, if you've got multiple people that are working with you, uh, you can set up a developer team that then you can have people join. Now in order, order to do that, again, you do have to have a developer account, but you come here and say add. And basically then it's gonna ask you to log in with your username and password. So let me go ahead and do that here. And now it's going to ask me if I want to add this server to my development team. Again, uh, Todd Oltoff, that's just my name. I'm independent here, right? Just set up my own developer account. And so it's going to actually add this uh, server to my development account. And do I want to do that? And I'm going to say sure, and I'll say add. And so now you can see it's adding uh, this server to my account here. And so it's going through that process of putting it on uh, my developer account with Apple. And so I'm going to let it do its process here. And once that's done, we should see my name showing up down here in the development team. So I'm going to let that run, and when it's finished, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, now that that's finished, you can see that uh, my server has been added to my developer team now. And so that's all set and ready to go. So if I were to go to my development account and look at servers, I would see uh, that information right there. As a matter of fact, let me, just, uh, let me pull up a website, and I can show you what that looks like. Okay, here I am on the developer website uh, over at Apple, and you can see I'm here in the Member Center. And if I just click on here for servers, uh, you'll notice that now it shows my Xcode server right here. And so it's got my server's name, the UDID, and it says it's got my certificate enabled. And if I ever wanted to remove the server, I could just uh, click remove right here and it would take it out of my servers. And I, I believe you can have up to 99 machines uh, connected with your uh, account with uh, Apple Developer. But just wanted to show you where you could see, uh, see that and check that out. In fact, let me just go back here and let's just put that down for a minute. Okay, so now that we've got all this set up, you notice I've got an area to add devices, and right now I can't add any devices because the service hasn't been turned on. So let me just go ahead and start the service. And so again, it says allow uh, access for Xcode from the internet. And so they want to know, do you want to access it remotely? If so, then it's going to open the appropriate port uh, on my Airport Extreme base station. So I'm going to go ahead and allow that and let it go ahead and open the port for me. And you can see now uh, everything's ready to go. You see I've got my status here, my server's all set up. Uh, I got the green light, and so it's ready to go. Now, if you notice here, again, like I said, with devices, I don't have uh, any devices in there because I've got to show you how to set that up. And so what you would do is go into uh, Xcode itself uh, to set this up and make it happen. So let me go ahead and launch uh, Xcode here for the first time. And so here's Xcode, and so we've got this all set up. And so what we're going to do is we'll just uh, create a new Xcode project. And let's say it's a Cocoa application. We're going to say Next, and uh, let's call it a name. Let's call it, let's just call it My App, just to make it simple. Uh, you can put an organization identifier. You can pick your language and all that kind of stuff. I'm not uh, worried about that. We'll use Core Data. And so it's going to put my name in there and say Next. It's going to ask me where to save it. We'll just go ahead and save it on uh, the desktop. Now you see here it says you can create a, a Git uh, repository uh, on your on your Mac, or if you wanted to, you could add a new server uh, to create that as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and create the Git repository um, because you'll see how it adds it to the app. So I'm going to say create. And so now I've got my new application here. This is my uh, project environment that's going to help me get things started. Now, if I wanted to add uh, devices now, uh, actually to my um, to my Xcode server, uh, I could come up here to Window, and you see where it says Devices right here. If I just click on Devices, you can see there's my Mac, and I've got all these different simulators. Well, if I wanted to add a new device, I would just click the plus button here. And I could add, you know, an iPhone 4 in there and say what version of the software it is and say uh, create. 
And so it's added an iPhone 4 in here now for me. And so I've got these different uh, devices that are in here. And again, these aren't these aren't uh, aren't real devices. They're simulators that allow me to actually simulate uh, my application. But this is where I would add um, add my devices in. And so once I've done that, then it would then the devices would actually show up here once I get them added in. Now, because I'm uh, running my server, I don't have any devices connected right now because I'd have to go to the separate devices and connect them to the server uh, by using Xcode and then having them join uh, my developer team. And then all those devices would show in there. So since I don't actually have something I'm developing, I don't have any uh, devices added in. Uh, but you would do that uh, inside Xcode once you sign up to actually join this application. So just wanted to let you know you could do that. Now, there are bots uh, that are here. If I just say View Bots and I click on that, it'll take me to... Uh, the website here and show me uh, the various bots. I can create a new bot uh, from the product menu because uh, I don't have any bots created. And so if I go into the product menu, of course the page isn't found because I'm looking for it. Uh, but basically I'd have to set up bots in here, log in and get that going. And then those bots would basically comb through my application. Again, since I don't have my application set and ready to go, I'm not going to see that here. So let me just pop this down. Now, that kind of gives you an idea of this setup. Now, let's go to the repositories area for a minute. And in the repositories area, I can uh, specify how I want the repository to be uh, accessed. And again, the repository is a, uh, a place where you have provisioning, right? Where you're able to take a look at uh, all the different changes and things that have been made to an application, and it basically charts all those for us. Now, I can access the repositories over HTTPS, or if I just click Edit here, I can also add SSH if I want to. So if I want to have uh, SSH access to it, I'm just going to leave it alone for now. And then again, they can, these repositories can be created by who, right? Logged in users or only some users. And so we're going to let logged in users do it. Now to add a repository, I just click the plus button here and give it a name. And I could just say my app again. And we're going to call it my, an I, my app repository. Um, again, logged in users have read and write access. Or I can change this to uh, only some users if I want to. But I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And also allow uh, readers, uh, users read and write access for HTTPS access. Again, this is a lot of stuff you'll use as a developer. I just want to show you how to set it up. So if I just click on Create here, it's going to go ahead and create uh, that repository for me. And there it is. So here's my, uh, my Git repository that I set up uh, for my particular app. If I ever wanted to edit it, I could just click the pencil to edit it, and I come right in here and check it out. You'll see here that this is the path to where uh, the library is. Uh, it's actually in um, Developer Xcode Server Hosted Repositories My App. If I just click the little arrow here, uh, inside server, it's going to show me where it's actually located uh, on my computer. And you see it's in a developer folder under My App, and here's here's the uh, the repository right under there. All right, so that's kind of where that's located. Let's go back here to Xcode. So I can add as many of these as I want, and I can delete them from here just by clicking the minus sign. But that gives you an idea of how to uh, actually set those different repositories up uh, to get that going for you to be able to start, uh, start your coding. So that's a, a really broad uh, overview of, um, of Xcode uh, server and how that works in OS X server. Like I said, I'm not a developer, so going into all of the details then of how you would actually use this and actually showing you the devices and, and adding them in there and all of that is not something that, uh, that I do. Um, but just wanted to let you know how to, how to get the basics of this all set up. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.